Hi, Stuart. Lisa, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. Very good. I'm really, really excited to have you here with me today. Um, we've me. known each other a long time, haven't we? Right back in your corporate days in um, Berensden, as it was called then, now Elise, where you're responsible for um, a, a, an awful lot of business. Um, and I can remember the, the, the days when we had the odd uh, social drink after work and you were telling me about your dream to have your own laundry and you did it. You absolutely yeah. did it. So you um, took a massive risk um, breaking away from corporate life um, and you actually put your money where your mouth is and you picked up a heavily loss making business and you spent two and a half years working really, really hard to actually turn it around successfully. Yeah. And you pretty much just got there and then lockdown happened. Oh. So tell me, tell, 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 tell us about the situation you found yourself in. I remember that Friday night when uh, the Chancellor was announcing the furlough, the drive home, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And mm -hmm. it was, that was probably the lowest point really. Um, not just for the business, but for the, for the men and women that have really looked after us all the way through and worked really, really hard. We are, we are I know it sounds a bit corny, but we are quite a close unit. It's a bit of a, it a, bit of a family. Um, so I was really worried about everybody's rent and mortgage being paid and, and myself. Very <laughs> um, stressful. And, you know, and so once, the, once it was announced, the furlough scheme, that gave me a bit of a, a sort of relief. But then a new normal happened and it was a, a, then a three-month journey of, operating this business on a very, very different rule book. Yes, so t tell me about that. What, what, what changed, what rules changed for you? Well, the first thing was, of course, that you know, the customer base I had pretty much shut down. So, so daily communications and daily business life had, had stopped um, for a lot, of, a lot of people in, in the sales. Certainly, in the, nobody's buying, so the sales are drying up completely. Everybody's in shock. Payments have stopped coming in because some of the hotel groups had furloughed everybody, so if, including the finance manager, including so you couldn't get payments in, so the, the, the invoice value just dropped. Um, so I had to find different ways of communicating with customers and with staff. Very difficult, I can imagine, because um, well, it's very difficult to get hold of um, the, the key people that you needed to speak to, I'd imagine, with everything kind of closed down, because you'd be used to kind of going to the hotel or the restaurant um, and speaking to them from there. So how did you go about that? Well, it was, it was a very strange sort of set of events, really. We, we still had a few customers, like I said, that were on, that were still trading. Um, and myself and my two partners, we were, we were delivering, we were out in vehicles, hand, you know, getting back to basics and actually delivering laundries, uh, services to customers, handballing it off. Trying, you know, oh, transit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so I was getting to know my customers in a completely different way. So they might have seen me, you know, suited and booted with a, uh, you know, signing the contract or then doing a, an account review or, or whatever. Um, but to actually be handing them the laundry. And, and similarly, a lot of the key people in the hotels that were, that were alive and, and working, they were also doing some manual jobs. They were, they were one, one customer in particular was uh, stripping the beds and taking the laundry back on. And, and she was doing the housekeeping job. And, uh, and what was, sort of hat was she wearing previously? Hotel owner. So uh -huh. hotel owner with, I would say, probably circa... 10 staff um, and you know so these are these are different different times different conversations and it brought us closer together I mean I can I can count on you know both hands of the customers that were doing those kind of uh, back to basics jobs just to keep survival yeah and what um, sort of um, hat did you find yourself um, sort of wearing in order to to try and you know support these people almost to get their business back on track them, themselves um, much more of a consultative um, you know approach really just just being helping them to reopen meant we had to we had to think something other than just laundry I mean we're pretty good at that that's what we do um, but it's it was the wider hygiene point and also even wider then how can we help encourage consumer confidence 
in the market to be able to bring people back into the hotels to stay. So what is it? And I have so very much I'm very open questions on, you know, what do you think and how can we help in a different way? Um, you know, a certificate of uh, compliance to hygiene regs, all that help them feel much more secure about reopening. So mm. they're, and I think it influenced the, her supply chain saying, well, if a laundry guy is having, or issuing a method statement on cleanliness, what is the boo supplier or the whatever else supplier doing? So it, it felt to me um, like we were b- both in it together.